I'm out here working on the channel fence and getting the electric fencing up to be able to run the cows a little bit more confidently, uh, the sheep are all lying here being amazingly calm and quiet. So I thought, what a perfect opportunity to go through some of the stuff about the colors and uh, that sort of thing that you find in Icelandic sheep. So here we go. So with the Icelandic sheep, you have some basic color patterns. Uh, you have solid colors, and then you have a gray version of those colors, and then you have spotted. There are also things like badger face and that sort of stuff, which we won't get into on this video. We're just going to go through the basic colors that uh, Icelandics can come in. Gray is just a, it's just a genetic marker that happens. Uh, they have a black or a brown, which is also called Morit, uh, undercoat. And that is the color determinant. But then if they have the pattern of graying, or if they have the pattern of spotting, or they can have the pattern of both, which gets interesting as well. So we're going to go down here and I'm just going to show you some examples of uh, what each of these colors kind of looks like because we're very fortunate in our flock to have a very good mixture which is wonderful from a fleece and spinning perspective because it gives you a lot of yarn in different shades all natural to create wonderful masterpieces. So there we have Grey Girl. Grey is a grey as her name states. As you can see, she's got a nice solid kind of grayish silvery tint to her body, but she will have the darker face and legs. It's a beautiful fleece to work with, but some grays can be wiry. So you just got to kind of pick and choose. Go back to Tony here, who's sleeping. <laughs> no, he's not dead. He's just sleeping. Tony is just starting to get his gray fleece. You can see there. Uh, he was quite dark to start with, and then it starts to come in as the age. I probably shouldn't wake him up. Hey, Tony. <laughs> He's dreaming. So that was a gray showing kind of the um, lamb fleece and what it will look like once they get older. Now here we have a Morit lamb. Now she's starting to lighten up from what she was when she was younger, but the Morit we find the color can vary a lot. Now this is a daughter of a different Morit, that's her mom behind her there. And you can see she is a lot darker than this girl here. So there's a lot of variation in the color. And as they get older, that fleece just kind of gets lighter, as you can see by the mom behind there. Uh, you'll find it's kind of a golden color by the end. Uh, we do have one ram boy that's going to be a Morit gray, which I will try and find. But all of these so far have been solid colored. Now these ones here, the young lamb sleeping at the front is going to be another gray. His um, fleece is still quite dark. He's not turning as quickly to the gray color as... Tony is and I think that implies this one is going to be a lot darker gray we have had that in the past where you, you get a white silvery gray and then you've also got this uh, kind of deep slate almost bluey gray this is where it makes it hard to narrow the sheep down oh there now he's got his head up you can sort of see under his chin there that gray is just starting to show and he always you can tell these when they're born because they have a gray nose Right above their lip will be gray. Otherwise, they look like a black. So you've got to get right in there and check uh, right on above their lip. So his mom, Beauty there, lying beside him, as well as Star over here with Spaniel, um, are solid blacks, as much as that is hard to believe. Uh, something that you will find is you get a lot of frosting. Uh, you'll have a solid fleece usually on the lamb fleece. I'm going to take you to look at Star's solid black boy just to show this. So this is Star's solid black boy here and you can see starts out as a beautiful black fleece. Now by the time we shear him this is going to be sun bleached and tipped out in probably a reddish brown color. Uh, we've had very few stay that nice dark black color. It's not the end of the world, just kind of from the perspective of a fleece. You don't really get a solid black fleece. Uh, you can pick 
parts and it'll be darker but for the most part the ends all tip out to be kind of a lighter sun bleached color this here is Enya's solid black girl and you can see again that beautiful black fleece which unfortunately won't stay oh and a apparently this is the prime spot and star wants it we will go from this side so there you can see she has her beautiful black but she is already starting on that face to get some bleached out parts i can see but she's a nice solid black and we will get a beautiful lamb fleece out of her before it starts to tip out and an interesting thing with them is behind her there you can see her mom enya enya was solid black when she was born so she has since frosted out we call that frosting it uh, kind of gradually happens over the years they get more and more of it each year after i shear but she has frosted out to be quite the gorgeous silver color it makes a beautiful beautiful yarn but she did start out solid black and one way to tell this is enya from the front that they are indeed a solid black is if you look at her nose there is no graying she still has a solid black face and solid black legs and those will remain even if the rest of her frosts out where on gray here you can see that grayed muzzle and little flecks all on her face this year because we used a Morit spotty ram, we have a lot of spotted babies. Hi, buddy. So spotting can occur basically in any pattern. Sometimes it's a little spot that you can't even see once the fleece grows in. So this little boy here is our Morit gray. And as you can see, he still looks mostly Morit, but there he's showing us his nose. You've got that gray muzzle and eventually he's going to gray out to be all that color that's kind of on top of his head, that really, really pale kind of creamy tan color. It's a beautiful fleece. We've only had one other sheep with that fleece and we did not keep it. So I was very excited when this boy arrived. Now out here, we're in the heat and the sun, so the lighting's a bit different, but we have Oreo. Oreo is a black spotted. Now she is a 2019, no, 2020 baby. So she has not had any lambs for us yet. And we've got Moo Cow over there. Of course, they're going to leave. Who's also spotted. And last but not least is Lila. Now Lila has produced us a little girl, Snow White. That is the same interesting coloring as her. Um, there's a word for it. I will write it below right now. Um, but you can see she's not actually white. She has that cream colored kind of tawny tan looking face and legs. They are a shade darker than her body. Uh, she produces a beautiful soft coat and we have been waiting for her to produce some more of this similar color. So this year she finally did. But this was just sort of a quick look at the basics of color in Icelandic sheep. Uh, I think that probably the variations in the color is one of the reasons that they became so sought after uh, for their fleece. And uh, similar to alpacas in that sense that you have a plethora of uh, variety in your uh, shades, your colors, uh, all in natural, of course, but easy to dye. And um, it just makes, you know, one less step if you really want to go as basic as not dying uh, you've got a multitude of colors to choose from and they're ever changing that is one thing i know i said it in my other videos but that's one thing that is important to remember is the next year that fleece will never be the same it's not going to be the same color it's always changing but i'm going to get back to my fence as you can see the sheep have uh, knocked it all down and it's hanging everywhere we will come back to this with a little bit more detail at a later date but i just wanted to kind of uh, produce this little um, short description information video on the colors that you get because well everybody was cooperating right now in the shade on a hot day